What it do? Bedtime crew, hey man, listen, UFC 299, O'Malley versus Vera 2. You guys know how I feel about this main event, but I'm going to give you my full card predictions today. Main card, prelims, early prelims. I'm covering every single thing on the card. If there's a particular fight that you want, just scroll down, guys. Just scroll down, look for the timestamps, and then realize that timestamps are for absolute fucking nerds, all right, dude? Oh, bedtime, I want to hear you talk about RDA, bro. Shut the fuck up, dude. All right, we're going to do the whole card, all right? Let's get into this. Early prelim, we got Joanne Wood versus Marina Moroz. A couple of victim weight nobodies. I'm just kidding, dude. Uh, I know Joanne Wood. She's pretty good. Uh, that's a bar. But I'm going to go with Marina Moroz by decision. I just think she's younger. The reach advantage is very good. And she's a good wrestler. She's going to mix it up. She's going to grapple. And she's way less likely to retire immediately after this fight is over. I think Joanne Wood has a high likelihood of retiring after this fight. She's had a couple of bad losses. Obviously, like, not to bad competition, but I just mean getting finished a lot as a WMMA fighter is not a good look, in my opinion. And I think her time has kind of passed in the sport. I could see her maybe winning this fight, but I'm just going to pick Marina Moroz just by being younger. Bit of a reach advantage. Those are things that I look for in fights I don't really care about. Let's move on. Another victim weight super fight. We got CJ Vergara. Versus Asu Almayev, dude. This is a huge fight in the flyweight division. And I'm going to go with Asu Almabayev. He's a good wrestler, dude. He beat up Ode Osborne his last fight. TJ Vergara, he's all right. You know what I'm saying? He's all right. <laughs> he's okay, bro. Um, but I just don't think he's at the level where I can trust him to kind of fraud check Asu Almabayev a little bit. I think the odds are a bit crazy. Almabayev's like a huge favorite. Usually I don't like picking guys that are huge favorite, especially on the prelims, because you just never know, right? So... You know, I'm not super confident, but I'm going to pick Asu Almabayev by round two submission. Fuck it. And that'll be that. Let's move on to the blob division. We got Robelis to Spain. Absolute can crusher versus Josh Parisian. This man's getting sent back to the fucking barnyard. I'm picking Robelis to Spain via 30 second KO. Sub 30 seconds, this fight's going to be over. I think Rebellus to Spain's going to fucking torch, uh, torch this dude. Um, like some smoked ham, trust, all right? He's going to cook this boy up. And that's going to be that for Josh Parisian, who is a, is a real specimen. I mean, I looked, at, I looked at this guy on the UFC website, and I said, Josh Parisian, what a specimen this guy is. He's a very big guy. He's, he's a bit, bit of a blob. Very blobby, and we don't like that, so we're not going to pick him, okay? Josh Parisian getting done in about 30 seconds. Let's move on. We got Michel Pajeda versus Mikhail Olizhezhek. Very good fight. Very exciting prelim. Like, this is being on the early prelims is pretty crazy because this could be the featured fight of, like, a fight night at this point, dude. This could be the co-main if we're putting fucking Tyson Pedro and Vitor Petrino on that shit, but... It's a pretty close matchup because you got to think either Michelle Pereira mogs this guy early on or Michelle Olejcek catches up to him late when he gasses out and finishes him. I'm seeing a lot of people picking Olejcek round three finish. I totally understand it, but I do think Michelle Pereira is enough of a physical specimen. He's improved enough over his last couple of fights. The fact that he's only 30 is fucking crazy. He looks 37. Um, he's a physical fucking freak, dude. I think early on he's going to have a lot of damage done in this fight. He's not like a Chidi Enja Kawani who's trying to, oh, please don't fight back. Please just give up. Right? He's he's happy to just keep fighting you. He's shown improved cardio over his past couple of fights on his win streak. Obviously, he's had some bad performances in the past at welterweight, but at middleweight, he looked pretty explosive. He looked pretty sharp. I think even at the end of his welterweight run, he was improving his cardio. So... I'm going to say he does enough in round one and round two to get a decision, and he has to survive round three. I'm going to take the favorite here, Michelle Pereira, by decision. Close fight. Ola Zeshek's very dangerous, especially with his body shots. I can see that being a factor, but I think Pereira is going to catch him with a big head kick early on, rock him, maybe nearly finish him in round one. Round two, he might lean on the wrestling if it gets a bit competitive. He's big, he's strong, he can take people down. Even when he's kind of outskilled, he can kind of just manhandle people. So I think Michelle Pereira has enough physically to steal two rounds of this fight. I think he can win the second round and survive the third round. But if it does go the other way, it will be a round three finish or a round two finish for Ole Jacek. I totally get people picking him. Um, very excited for this fight. This is one of my Dana White, if you don't know, now you know fights. Like this is fucking lit, bro. Uh, headlining the prelims. We got Ion Kutaleba, bro, versus Philip Linz. Uh, a couple of PFL nobodies. Uh, I'm going to pick 
Eon Kutalaba by round one finish. I think round one KO, maybe a, a ground and pound TKO. He's very, very dangerous early on. He's gone toe to toe. And when I say dangerous, I mean against very good competition. Felipe Linz, this I was I was considering picking OSP to beat this fucking guy. You know what I mean? I don't really see anything that that scares me about this guy or impresses me in terms of like, oh man, he's gonna really hurt Kutalaba early on. I just don't think he has the speed or the skill level of the guys that have beat up Kutalaba. And you get Kutalaba performances where he looks like shit, and then you get performances where he just mogs people, dude. And even the ones where he loses, he is winning those fights before he loses. Or at least he looks good in those performances before he loses. So I think there's just too much of a chance that Kutalaba hurts this fucking guy, takes him down, starts to beat him up before he makes a stupid mistake. And for that reason, I'm going to say Kutalaba round one finish. Uh, Felipe Linz is old as well. He's had a lot of time off. I believe he got suspended. I could be wrong, but I just think Kutalaba is a lot more active. And, you know, eventually, you've got to think eventually this fucking guy will start to use his head. Um... And against lower competition, I trust him to do that a little bit more. So I'm going to pick Kutalaba to finish this fight round one. So early prelims, I got Kutalaba, I got Pereira, I got Despain, Almabayev, and I got Marina Moroz. All the favorites, but, you know, it is what it is, bro. Let's move on to the prelims. Oh my god, Curtis Blades, I fucking... All right, Pedro Munoz versus Kyler Phillips. How crazy is it that Pedro Munoz could be headlining this card right now? I mean, bro went to a split decision with Cheeto, uh, but he is 37. He does have T-Rex arms. And the thing about Pedro Munoz is he's one of these Joe Rogan victims, dude. And I, I'm not trying to say it in a weird way. He's one of these Joe Rogan victims who dead ass. I don't know if it's because he's a jujitsu guy. I don't know if it's because he knocked out Cody Garbrandt, which was CGI. It didn't happen. Joe Rogan acts like this guy's a fucking future champion, bro. This guy gets on. The Pedro Munoz, this guy's a killer. This guy's an absolute marauder. It's like all he does is calf kick and throw overhands. If you can avoid the calf kick and the overhands, you got him. You got he doesn't change it up. If he, if that doesn't work, he's just going to keep trying it until maybe it does by accident. So I think he's pretty like one dimensional in how he approaches his fights. He will mix up the wrestling a little bit, which could be interesting, but I just think he's going to wait too long trying to calf kick, trying to hit Kyler Phillips with an overhand. Kyler Phillips's whole style is to be long and rangy, avoid those, mix in his own kicks as well. I think Kyler Phillips is going to be able to win a close decision in this one. Plus, you know, I don't see this being a finish. I don't think he's going to KO or hurt Munoz. Um, but same for Munoz. I think he's just going to swing his big hooks, his big meaty hooks, and he's not going to be able to, to catch Phillips. Um, plus, you got to think Phillips would probably have him decently scouted from O'Malley fighting him. Um, he fought Song Yudong as well, looked pretty good in that fight. So I think Kyler Phillips has seen a pretty similar style before. We haven't really seen Pedro Munoz definitively beat a guy that is super long and rangy and can kind of avoid those long long punches and the calf kicks. Um, I'm going to go Kyler Phillips close, like 29-28 decision. Um, should be a decent fight. Let's move on. Talk about the lightweight GOAT. Mateus scam rock, bro. Can I just say? No, nah, I'm just. I'm, I was gonna hate on Cheeto some more, but I'm not gonna do it, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna hate on Cheeto. Let me talk about the goat, Mateus scam rock versus Rafi dos nachos. I'm picking gam rock here, and I almost want to pick him by KO. I almost want to pick him by TKO, um, because RDA. What the fuck is this guy doing? This guy's fighting at welterweight. He's fighting at lightweight. He's mixing it up. He's just fighting whoever the fuck he wants. And he's more of a wrestler now. I think he will try and wrestle Gamrot. He'll probably just get reversed, put against the fence, and fucking taken down over and over again. I can see a very Colby Covington-like performance for Gamrot in this fight. I just don't see how RDA beats him. Maybe RDA catches him with some shit, but I just don't think he's fast enough, young enough, you know, able to take him down enough to where he can mix in those shots that will really hurt Gamrot. I don't think he has that finishing power to really deter Gamrot from shooting a lot of takedowns as well. And honestly, if I see a finish, I could weirdly see Gamrot catching him with some some straight punches. Gamrot does hit his opponents a lot. He has a couple of KOs on his record. I know people think of him as this fluky flukester, like scam artist, dark wizard type fucking guy, but he does low-key have some like decent power if you're worried about the takedowns. And I think RDA will be 
trying to not get taken down, especially after his last fight. He got out-wrestled by Vicente Luque, who is a striker. So I could definitely see RDA being overly worried about the takedowns and getting caught with a big right hand. Maybe just Gamrot follows up with some Yair Rodriguez kind of ground and pound and we see a TKO, but I'm just going to play it safe. I'm going to say Gamrot by decision, but I can, like I said, weirdly see a TKO win for Gamrot here. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty confident he beats RDA. If he loses to RDA, you're cooked, bro. You're done. It's over, bro. Let's move on. WMMA. I love it, man. I love it, bro. Card of the year. We got Caitlin Chukagian, the split decision merchant. Versus Macy Barber. I don't like this fight for Macy Barber. I think Caitlin Jukagian, she is very good at scamming the system, bro. She's very good at fighting long and rangy and going, ha 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 ha, and, you know, making the judges think that she's landing punches and winning a decision. I'm going to pick Macy Barber by split decision. I think Macy Barber's going to wrestle, which is kind of the weakness of Jukagian. She really, I, I don't, dude, when I watch her fight, I'm like, what do you actually do? Like, what are you actually good at? She just strikes at range. Like I said, she literally just goes, ha ha, ha ha, and just throws her legs at the, the opponent. And sometimes the judges give it to her. So I can see that happening, but I think Macy Barber will try and wrestle. And she does have actual power. She can hurt Chukagian at some point or do some damage. Um, maybe cause a cut with a shot. She's definitely more likely to do visible damage, which makes me think she'll get the decision, especially because the UFC wants her to win this fight. That's another thing to consider. Um, all in all, I just think Macy Barber, younger, more damaging potential, more likely to wrestle as well, which is which is good for her, uh, especially to steal a close round. And honestly, I just think Chukagian is one of these old school WMMA fighters. Like they just like I remember watching this podcast podcast clip of her, and she's literally like, "Yeah, my boyfriend said I should fight, so I just showed up and just beat up this random girl that didn't train before." Like I feel like she got into the UFC by being tall and athletic, so she could just beat up short old women. But now Barber is actually like talented, has power, is trying to like win the fight via finish, not by decision. I think that favors Macy Barber in a damage-based scoring system, being someone that actually wants to finish the fight. So give me Macy Barber by decision, but I'm not super confident. Let's talk about my boy Curtis Blades. All right, dude, Curtis Blades. I swear to God, Curtis Blades, if you shoot a fucking takedown and get triangled, I'm going to fucking... <laughs> Curtis, Curtis... <laughs> I'm picking jail tonight, Mita, but listen to me, Curtis Blades. I want you to win. I want Curtis Blades to win. I'm going to be completely fucking real here. I'm going to just tell you how it is. I'm getting more and more unhinged as this video goes on. But listen, dude, I want Curtis Blades to win. I need Curtis Blades to win. I'm picking jail tonight, Mita, by decision. I want Curtis Blades to win, but I can't pick him, bro. I cannot pick him. Do I think he has the skills and the fat? to stuff a takedown off Jelton Almeida and chin him and fuck him up on the feet with his boxing, which he was beating up Derek Lewis on the feet easily before he got knocked out. Yes. And he was hitting Sergei Pavlovich with crazy good shots before realizing he's a wrestler and needs to wrestle. Yes. Do I think he could do that to Almeida? Yes. Do I think he will? Is the sky blue? He's Curtis Blades. He's not going to fucking do it. Curtis Blades, faced with a knockout artist, he will try and strike with him. Faced with a jujitsu fucking wizard, he will try and take down Jelton Almeida and he will get submitted. Or he'll try and just clinch with him too much, get taken down. I don't see Jelton Almeida wanting to strike with Blades because that is how he loses this fight, um, is via KO. I don't think Blades will be able to stuff all of his takedowns because Jelton Almeida can actually chain wrestle. He will just slide around him until he gets something, until Blades falls off balance, until he gets him down. And I think off his back, I don't see much from Blades. He got taken down and controlled by Alexander Volkov, who is a striker, and Jelton Almeida is infinitely more talented in the grappling, I think, than Volkov. Not as big, obviously not as strong. That might be a factor, but I just think skill-wise in the grappling, he's a better grappler. Um, I think his chin can probably take one or two punches. His roid, you know, mutated chin will be able to take a couple of punches off Blades, but fuck, man. I really want Curtis Blades to win. I really do. I really do, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to pick Jelton Almeida by close decision. I think there will be some scary moments for him where Blades kind of scrambles, ends up on top, starts throwing ground and pound shots. I think that's a possibility for him to win is via ground and pound TKO. We saw Lewis get on top and land good shots. And I think if Blades gets in that spot, he's going to drop elbows. He's going to do damage. But I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to pick Jelton Almeida by decision just because I can't trust this motherfucker. I cannot trust Curtis Blades to use his fucking head. So... Give me Jelton Almeida via decision. 
let's move on to the main card, boys. Starting off, I want your dong. Let me yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. I want your dong to. I, I okay, bro. I'm picking your dong. I've got your dong. I don't have your dong. I've got Song your dong to win this fight. Um, I know that we're all, you know, a lot of you guys are yarn sexuals. You love Piotr Yarn. You want him to win. You think he's gonna win. I just don't see it, dude. I just don't see it. I just, I feel like this is one of those ones where you're picking with your heart versus picking with your brain. And you're on a losing streak. All your aura is gone. You took a lot of damage in your last fight. Even incidentally, you did take damage. You did look small. You did look kind of beat up in that fight. I think Yadong has the momentum. Momentum is a big deal on both sides. Like, Yan has negative momentum. Song Yudong is coming off a couple of good wins. Really good performance against Corey Sanhagen as well, which is a good sign for him. Going against the guy that last beat Corey. But I just think the difference in this fight is the damaging ability and the, the, the way that these guys fight. Song Yudong from the jump is trying to knock you out with everything he does. Pyotr Yan is trying to like point fight or counter punch. And I think if he lets Song Yudong go first and third, which is likely to happen the way that Yan fights, we're going to see Yan get hit with something and take a lot of damage first. And he's going to have to come from behind. I think another thing that makes me think Yudong is going to get the nod in this fight by decision, I think it'll be a close fight. I'm not saying Yudong is going to fuck up Pyotr Yan, but I do think he's going to get the nod by decision. He does mix in the wrestling now. He knows how to win rounds. And even the Chris Gutierrez performance, a um, couple of his, his other fights, he knows how to get points he knows how to get around if it's not a compet if it's not like okay i can't really find this guy's chin let me take him down let me get on top of him let me start doing ground and pound let me look for a submission here so i think song yudong's more likely to mix it up if he's losing around and get a takedown and sway the judges and be able to do visible damage with everything that he does and even just create loud crashes every time he hits somebody piyoti yan He's so accurate, it's almost a, it's almost a, a, a weakness now. Because if he doesn't hit you clean, he's not hitting you at all. Whereas Song Yudong, he doesn't give a fuck. He's just going to swing. He'll hit your arms. He'll hit your guard really hard. He'll make it look like he's hurting you. He can move you around with his shots. I think Song Yudong is more powerful. I think Piotr Yan's going to be looking to defend, not get caught, and get behind on the numbers. And then I think Song Yudong will mix in the wrestling too, which he was doing to Sanhagen and really fucking him up with that too. Like, he was making Sanhagen look... I don't know about you guys, but dude, Corey Sanhagen looked panicked as fuck in that fight. Like, Corey Sanhagen was like, oh my god, he's hitting me. Oh fuck, now he's wrestling. Oh fuck, now he's back to, you know, it, it was a mile a minute. And I think against Piotr Yan, that's going to work really well. I'm going to take Song Yudong here by decision, um, just off the momentum and his damaging ability. And he does mix in the takedown. So, Song Yudong by decision. Let's move on. My boy, JDM. You guys know me. I'm a bit of a JDM glazer. I'm not going to lie. But I feel like it's a little bit warranted. This isn't like a Benoit Saint Denis glaze, like my boy Flukas Glazier, right, dude? This is this is this is reasonable glaze, okay? This is licensed glaze, okay, dude? And I'm picking JDM here. I was gonna say JDM by decision. I'm feeling JDM by knockout. I'm feeling a JDM TKO is coming, bro. And I think this is gonna be the jab putting Gilbert Burns at range. I think the body shots will start to really affect Gilbert Burns especially after Gilbert Burns wrestles. I think Gilbert Burns will be able to take down JDM at least once. I think you'll take him down up against the fence, sit him down, and I think JDM will get straight back up. I think that's how it will happen because Gilbert Burns is not a finisher on the ground unless you're Neil Magny. He's not going to immediately sub you if he takes you down. His ground and pound is damaging, but it's not finishing, if that makes sense. I think JDM will be able to get back up to his feet. I think he's learned his lesson from the Hafez fight. Um, and I think he'll get taken down. He'll get back up against the fence. He'll, he'll skirt off the fence. They'll go back to striking. And we'll see Gilbert Burns start to just look for kind of a Hail Mary of like big overhand right. You know, haha, <laughs> just swinging big punches. JDM gets out of the way, starts to pop him with the jab, with the body shot, gets him up against the fence. And I can see the Dan Hooker KO. I can see a, a Dan Hooker type KO happening here. I'm seeing like a body shot, then a big hook as Burn tries to load, as Burns tries to load up. I can see Burns like loading up to hit JDM after a body shot and just getting his head fucking spun around with the hook and just kind of sits up against the fence. JDM follows up. That's it. So I'm going to take JDM by round two TKO up against the fence. Again, I'm seeing body shot left hook 
or body shot, big right hand on the end of it. I think it's going to be a big like crowd pop moment for some reason. Um, as for Gilbert Burns' chance, to be honest, if I had to say, how does Gilbert Burns win this fight? Round one submission or bust? Like, am I crazy? Hey, bro, pause, by the way. Am I crazy? I feel like Gilbert Burns has to submit this guy to win this. I feel like if they stay striking, if they go to a decision, he's going to take so much damage. He's 37. He took a lot of damage in that fucking Bilal fight from the GOAT Bilal Muhammad. He's been injured a lot recently. So I think if it goes to a decision, he's going to take a lot of damage off JDM. So I think Gilbert Burns needs to win this fight by submission if he wants to get it done. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to take JDM by round two knockout up against the fence. Let's talk about Kevin Holland versus MVP. I was originally going with Kevin Holland. I'm not going to lie. I was very, very swayed by even looking into that Can Crusher video that I did. Go check that out if you haven't seen it. I was thinking, you know what? MVP just hasn't fought the competition. He's old. You know, he hasn't really, you know, he hasn't really proven he can beat a guy like Kevin Holland. But, oh man, Kevin Holland, the more I rewatch his fights, the more I go, dude, this guy has all the intangibles, but he doesn't have the fundamentals to beat MVP. He has the power. He has the, the, he has the wrestling ability, but he doesn't use it unless he's hurt. And that's like a, the easiest time to stuff takedowns is when somebody's hurt or it's a desperation shot. We've seen MVP sub people off desperation grappling attempts. I don't think that's going to happen here. But I'm just saying it's not free, free work to take down MVP. You have to be a Logan Storley, who's a very good wrestler. You have to be Douglas Lima, who's like a complete veteran Bellator champion. Say what you want about him. Like he's a pretty high level fighter. You have to be that type of guy. I think Kevin Holland can take him down. Will he though? No. I think Kevin Holland is going to try and strike. I think Kevin Holland's going to get chopped up with calf kicks. And if I'm being honest here about Kevin Holland, he doesn't move his feet. Go watch his fights. He doesn't move his feet. He doesn't check kicks. When he's, when he's getting pressured, he shells up. He just Philly shells, leans his head away, relies a lot on his chin to get through that stuff. And he, he has high power, which is why a lot of people kind of get cautious with him and cagey with him. I think MVP will be cautious of the power, but he's just going to chop leg kicks. He's going to dart in and out with his right hand. And honestly, I think if he wrestles, he, be he beats MVP, but I don't think he will. So I'm going to say MVP wins this fight by decision. And I could weirdly see Kevin Holland getting injured or hurt with a leg kick. I could weirdly see a, a, a MVP win via TKO injury or more likely because Kevin Holland's a tough motherfucker, dude. He's a fucking like he's a scrapper, bro. Um, I think MVP is going to hurt him with calf kicks and Kevin Holland's going to be limping around the cage, talking to him, trying to hit him with a big right hand. He kind of slaps with his punches. I think he's going to throw a big slapping right hands, trying to hurt MVP. MVP is going to dart, be darting around, just playing it safe because he wants to win by decision. Um, I think MVP is going to win this one by decision. 29, 28, maybe 30, 27 calf kicks. I can, again, I'm, I'm envisioning Kevin Holland crippled by a calf kick, kind of limping after MVP trying to knock him out, talking to him, Joe Rogan glazing the fuck out of him, talking about calf kicks have changed the game of MMA. You can see it now. Now that I added Joe Rogan, I know you can picture this clearly. So give me MVP by decision. And the debuting guys, they never lose. Michael, Michael Chandler, Ben Askren, these guys always find a way. So I'm going to take MVP by decision. Um, let's talk about the co-main event. Five rounder. Dustin Port, Bad be be Times a nice dude, man. The guy's fucking picking me in the co main event, dude. You know, the guy's a nice guy, man. Give me Dustin Poirier, late TKO. I've thought about this more and more since I made my video. A lot of people were like, oh, you're going to regret this. I'm, I'm feeling decently confident. Now, obviously, do I think Benoit Saint Denis is dangerous? Yes. This is not an easy fight. I'm not saying Benoit Saint Denis is a fraud. I'm not saying he's going to get fraud checked in this fight. I think a lot of people will, will say that if he loses. I don't think he's a fraud. I just think this is too much too soon for Benoit Saint-Denis. On a technical level, Poirier is better. I think ben Benoit Saint-Denis, if he's going to rely on his toughness in this fight, that's not going to win him the fight, dude. You're not going to win a fight against Dustin Poirier relying on toughness. Gaethje beat him with head movement, frustrated him, and technical striking. He set up that head kick perfectly. Dustin Poirier is a southpaw. He will not be as open to the body kick of Benoit Saint-Denis, which is one of his most dangerous weapons. He won't be as open to the head kick. He won't be open to the straight left hand. We've seen Ishmael Bonfim be able to counter those strikes of Benoit by switching. Um, 
And again, the thing that worries me about Benoit, there's no head movement there. His hands are down when he blitzes. He walks forward square, punch, 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 punch. I can really see Poirier just cover, 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 bang. Catching him with big shots that we've seen him get hit with off other guys. And those guys are not as powerful, as accurate as Poirier. I don't worry too much about Poirier's chin. It is a bit of a question mark, obviously, but he's been chin before. He doesn't really rely on it to win his fights. He relies on his... He does rely on his toughness, but more than anything, it's actually his defense. You see Max Holloway, Conor McGregor. It's, weird. it's, it's hard to hit the guy, you know? It's hard to hit him with his, with his little head movement and all that. It's a bit hard to hit him. And I think the southpaw versus southpaw, him training for Conor and those, in those couple of fights, I think the calf kick will be there for Poirier. Benoit's very heavy on his front leg. I can see the calf kick being there. And I just think as the fight goes on, you know, when Benoit St. Denis tries to take him down, which I think he will, if these other lightweights are scrambling with you and getting back up, Poirier's a big lightweight. I think Poirier is going to be able to get back up. I think Poirier is going to be, get, be able to get back up to his feet. I think he's going to be able to just scramble with Benoit St. Denis, especially early on, because he's a big motherfucker at lightweight. He's a black belt. He is a good grappler. He's only lost to the best. And I think at five rounds of Benoit St. Denis pace and Poirier, as a fight goes on, his accuracy, his defense improves, his flow state improves. I think this is going to be very similar to the Gaethje fight the first time. And we're going to see a late Poirier TKO round four, maybe round five. Benoit St. Denis is gassed. He's swinging big kicks. Poirier is starting to kind of slip everything, land bigger punches. He just puts too many on Benoit St. Denis. Benoit covers up against the fence. Poirier just unloads a combo on him, and that's it from the ref. Um, I don't see Benoit St. Denis getting smoked if he loses. I think it's going to be a fucking war. I'm so excited for this fight. But yeah, I got Poirier late TKO. I think he's just going to grit his way through this one. And he's never lost two in a row. So give me Dustin Poirier late TKO. Main event, I already talked about this. I'm taking Sean O'Malley. I think Sean O'Malley is going to get this one done by KO uh, round two. I'm feeling a round two TKO against the fence. I don't see Cheeto getting knocked down. I don't see him getting like put out cold. Like I don't, I don't think that's a possibility. It may be, but um, I do get those Izzy and Pereira vibes from this fight. And maybe that's just like reading into it too deep, but I get those Izzy Pereira vibes where everyone's like, if O'Malley wins it, he has to just play it safe for, for 25 minutes. He has to be perfect. You know, you know, he has to keep his cardio intact. He might have to wrestle. I think O'Malley's feints, his leg kicks, and his straight punches, they're going to fuck up Cheeto just like they did the first time. I know that that's, that was a while ago, and I don't look into it too much, but you look at their last few fights, when you're throwing at Cheeto, he's just covering, covering, covering. He's either defending or he's attacking. He doesn't really do both. He doesn't slip to kind of hit you back. He just covers, 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 waits till you're done, then it's his turn to go. And I think O'Malley, with his output, his feints, and the leg kicks, and the straight punches, he's accurate as well. Every single O'Malley fight, you can say what you want about his competition. He has rocked or hurt every single opponent that he's fought, except Pedro Munoz, right? Um, but I think, I think Marlon Vera over 25 minutes to not get rocked by Sean O'Malley is just ridiculous. And I think if O'Malley gets hurt, it's going to be later in the fight. So that's why I think early on, we're going to see O'Malley catch Cheeto before Cheeto catches him. And especially, again, I've, dude, I can weirdly feel like an early stoppage. I don't want to say that, but like... Um, I can just see Cheeto kind of getting wobbled a little bit and, you know, sticking his tongue out. O'Malley just follows up with a crazy combo, maybe rocks him a little bit, like standing, follows up, follows up, just too many unanswered shots. The ref kind of stops it, and Cheeto kind of complains about the stoppage. The fans kind of complain about the stoppage. I just have this weird feeling O'Malley's going to be able to say he, he definitively beat Cheeto. Um, obviously, I understand picking O'Malley by decision. I'm not against that. I was going to do that originally, but for some reason... I'm just feeling a KO in this fight. I, don't, I can't really put a, a solid uh, this reason right here is why. I just have a feeling about it and I can kind of just picture it happening. So give me Sean O'Malley, round two, TKO, um, wobbles Cheeto with a big right hand, follows up, puts him against the fence, just unloads the clip on him and the ref kind of saves Cheeto as he's kind of, you know, shelling up. Um, that's my full predictions for UFC 299. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the longer video. Um, if you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. At 20,000, I'm going to be doing the impressions tier list. We're very, very close to that. So subscribe if you want to see that. Um, drop a like on the video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Bedtime MMA for my live reactions to the fight as it goes on. Um, enjoy the fights, you guys. I'll drop a tier list tomorrow. Have a good day, boys. Goodbye.